real estate. Hi, I'm Stephen Gasquay with the National Association of Realtors. We all see the headlines about natural disasters, water resources, and clean energy, but we might not see how those and other environmental issues affect the nation's real estate industry. That's why last week, NAR brought together some of the country's top experts for its first environmental summit. The goal? to help real estate leaders get a clear view of what environmental issues mean to property owners, buyers, sellers, and the professionals they work with now and in the future. Our country's first Secretary of Homeland Security, Tom Ridge, laid out the national security risks from drought, hurricanes, and other natural and man-made disasters. And former Agriculture Secretary Dan Glickman showed us the tug of war we face in the decades ahead as natural resources become increasingly scarce. It was a day and a half of tough, candid talk, but NAR President Steve Brown says it's just this kind of forward-looking action that keeps Realtors central to policymaking in Washington. So we have two goals here at the Environmental Summit. One is to evaluate the plethora of information of environmental risk and threats that could impact real estate and our real estate industry. And two, it is to identify the next steps for addressing these realities. NAR is looking at the ideas that came out of the summit, and it will position realtor leaders in the years ahead to work with lawmakers in Washington so that they too can have a voice in the environmental rules that impact real estate. Ms. Smith goes to Washington. Last week, Donna Smith, a realtor from Greenville, South Carolina, appeared before a U.S. Senate committee to talk flood insurance. You might recall that almost a year ago, flood insurance premiums went through the roof. Premiums went up so high and so fast, some people risked losing their homes, and others weren't able to buy a home of their own. NAR fought those rate hikes and succeeded in getting Congress to pass a law slowing them down and making sure any increases are accurate. That's why Donna Smith came to Congress, to deliver the Realtors report card on how the federal government is doing in implementing the new law. And her assessment, pretty good, but with some very important work still to be done. Uh, the consumer has to have someone to go to. Uh, they come to their realtor first, usually. They call their insurance agent. They don't know anything about it. They call their realtor, and obviously it's our fault if it's good or bad. We'd like for it right. to be good. But we don't know anything about it. We're really not in the insurance business. But we need a mechanism, and that advocate would be the person, that office that we could go to, they could go to, and say, we have this rate, and it seems out of line. What do we do? Where do we go? Help us. Smith told the senators Realtors want to see action on four areas in particular. Clarifying whether people with second homes and commercial property owners are eligible for refunds on those sky-high premiums. Creating a federal advocate to help property owners when their insurance companies won't cooperate. Making sure the viewpoint of real estate professionals is included when the federal government redraws the flood maps. And making it easier for property owners to appeal if they disagree when the federal government redraws those flood maps. NAR scores a victory for real estate professionals involved in short sales. Just a few weeks ago, NAR convinced the Federal Housing Administration to allow dual agency representation in FHA pre-foreclosure transactions like short sales. Last year, FHA issued a policy that would have kept brokerage firms and individual licensees from representing both sides of the transaction when a property with FHA-backed financing is sold in a short sale. But NAR worked with the agency, and the result is a new policy that removes that restriction while still protecting consumers. NAR's Sarah Young explains the change the National Association of Realtors helped bring about. NAR worked closely with FHA to allow dual agency in short sales, but now FHA wants additional checks and balances in the process. So you're going to need to market the property for at a minimum of 15 calendar days, and after that 15-day period is over, if offers come in, they can be evaluated, but if multiple offers come in, FHA wants to see the one that's going to offer them the highest net return. And also now the listing agent broker and the buyer agent broker is going to need to be on the pre-foreclosure sales addendum. NAR is working with FHA on another important front too. 
Condominium financing. Condos are a key part of the real estate market, especially for first-time buyers. And we'll be keeping you up to date as progress is made in this area. Some good news on the home sales front. The pace of existing home sales in June rose almost 3% from the month before, putting the market on track to reach just over 5 million sales for the year. Inventories are improving too. NAR Chief Economist Lawrence Yoon in Washington explains what's happening. Because we have had a three consecutive months of increase, uh, cumulatively over this three months time span is a 10% jump, which is uh, uh, significant. And that's our show for the week of August 4th. Real insights from your nation's Realtors. Thank you for joining us. And we hope we'll see you again right here in the coming weeks as we look at the latest news on The Voice for Real Estate.